Hello, welcome to the seventh episode of Yay. For the Love of Improv. For the Love of Improv. Yeah, we always have to sing that <laughs> somehow. It's not the thing. We are um, your hosts. I am Jesse Wicks. And I'm Katie Welsh. Uh, today we're talking with Jason Sarna. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello. Hello, Jason. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Jason, so our topic of today is sketch and kind of how it uh, relates to improv. Uh, Jason actually um, studied sketch uh, and performed it and did all that good stuff at uh, Second City as well as an I.O. And we'll get into that later. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're talking about. And um, before we get started, though. We just like to let you know that we're not necessarily experts at improv. And we actually have the belief that it's really hard to become an expert at improv because the like all the different levels, you still have something to learn. Mm. And so our kind of mantra here on For the Love of Improv is just that you, we're all learning from each other. So kind of the philosophy here is we're going to bring people on and kind of just pick your brains about everything improv so that we can learn and we can grow as people too. And so we can hope that people can join us in that and learn something from today. Yeah. And uh, we do have a couple segments that we do uh, on the podcast, one being a game segment and also a history segment, and then a concept of the day. So we'll get to all those later. Yeah, lots Stay to tuned. unpack in this episode. Yeah. And I'd like to say I'm not also not an expert. At this, <laughs> so I think that that's a great way to, to do a show or talk about improv or talk about anything creative. Because I feel yeah. like you're always learning and always learning new things. And yeah. it's impossible to master. I mean, people who probably tell you they mastered are probably full of crap. Right. Right. And a lot of times I realize that like you get kind of on a roll and then you think you're when you think you're doing really good, yeah. it gets you, get you start getting in your head. Yeah. Yeah. Or that, yeah. Well, but I would I will say at the very least you have more experience and yeah. you've taught yeah. sketch, you've mm-hmm. done it a lot more than yeah. Jess and I. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I, I so actually that's, noticed yeah. that some of the people who are more skilled at improv are actually the more humble ones because mm-hmm. it's almost mm-hmm. humbled them a bit. You know? So yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I so, feel like too, like just really quick on improv though. Mm-hmm. Like even if you start getting built up, like I mean, especially with improv or writing in general, you mm-hmm. get you do anything, you get knocked back down very quick. Totally, it's a huge check. It's like your ego or whatever. I know. You're, yeah, it's like a creative, it's like the creative thing, you know, mm-hmm. it's like it almost squelches your creativity in a way because you're like, I'm so awesome. Yeah. And then you <laughs> ease back on kind of being more, you know, so meticulous and trying as hard, I guess, mm-hmm. or something, you know. Yeah. Know. It's so totally. true. So, Jason, we're going to start off by asking you a question that we ask all of our guests. All right. And that is not what your spirit animal, which is what I have written down here. You don't have to answer that question. Um, Why did you show up to your first improv class or workshop, and why did you keep coming back? Um, So I started... um, So Mm improv-related? So I was probably... When I was 23, I moved to California with because I I was going to be a cop originally, and then I... Really? Yeah. And wow. then I was colorblind. So then I like mm-hmm. lost out in this like big oh job opportunity God. when I was like 21. Wow. So I kind of had a big, uh, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. And long story short, I ended up like moving to California with my friend who was going to school for drumming in Hollywood. And I just didn't have anything to do. So I was like, I'll go out there. Mm-hmm. So, um, and that's when I started, we started writing like a screenplay together and I started taking this class at UCLA. I applied and got into this like professional program. It was like an inner it was like not a, it was it was like you had to have a um a bachelor's degree but you didn't need a it was like in between a bachelor's and a master's degree it was mm-hmm. like a pre-prep program to go there but okay. then i was there i didn't know what i was doing i was so young it was so weird being out in hollywood like we lived in west hollywood and i uh-huh. worked like right down the street from the comedy store at radio oh, shack wow. <laughs> and i was like <laughs> you worked at radio shack <laughs> Yeah, I was like literally That's didn't know awesome. what I was doing, losing my mind and kind of like <laughs> got to get out of there. Kind of like, yeah. so I left, came back to Chicago and then I was like working at Papa John's delivering pizzas. <laughs> um, and my friend Courtney, well, I first found out about Second City, my same friend who I was living with in California, where we called them one time and we were like, we're like, we're funny. We could do stuff. <laughs> And we like call them. We laugh at each other. <laughs> yeah. Oh my and we God. just call them and we're like, hey, we want to do some, s- we got some stuff to write. And they're mm-hmm. like, well, we have classes or whatever. We're like, well, we're not taking those. And then, <laughs> we're better than yeah. that. We don't need that. Yeah. So that was the first time I knew about Second City because mm-hmm. I was, I grew up in the suburbs, probably 30 minutes southwest of the city. Mm-hmm. 
So I, I went in like grow up in the city. Mm-hmm. But then my friend, when I came back, I was working at Papa John's. I was like 24 at the time. My friend Courtney was like, oh, I'm going to start taking comedy classes at Second City. Do you want to do it? like together and i was like yeah sure like i was always Mm -hmm. into comedy i was Mm -hmm. writing a lot of like humor blogs like i wrote a lot about oh um i have like 200 pages or so of like stuff on radio shack stuff i I bet there's a lot of material there lots and like about (laughs) papa john's i I wrote like all these blogs for like myspace so were you studying comedy at any point no, I was just mm. always into it. Just like, into I just in, liked comedy as a kid, like, growing up watching the Three Stooges and mm-hmm. um, whatever <laughs> else I would watch. I mean, movies, a lot of movies and stuff like that. But so, anyways, I went there with Courtney and it was Sketch. And I started mm. Sketch and I thought I was funny, like everybody <laughs> who starts Sketch yeah. probably does. And I wrote about probably like every guy does, probably like masturbation. And, <laughs> stupid like that happens in the sketch world because like, stand-up comedy i mean that's all it is sorry yeah. guys but all it's the beginner like guys beginner are like guys are talking about their I mean, dicks or gosh, their yeah. whatever yeah. they're doing what is that about i don't know i mean i don't know but i, I wrote one there, about but... my my first sketch was about <laughs> a black box that my my doctor gave me a black box when i was like seventh grade mm-hmm. and it had a bunch of note cards in it mm-hmm. and he's like here's i was like i'm gonna give you this box and uh if you see anything you want to talk about, let me know. And he like, left. well, my penis. He left. <laughs> <laughs> he left the room, and then I was slipping through it. It's like suicide, depression, all these oh. like heavy, and then it's like masturbation. I'm just like, no. And he and he came back. He's like, anything you want to talk about? I'm like, nope. Oh my god, so that's kind that's of what I, sweet and sad at the same, yeah. and funny at the same time. So that's what I wrote my first sketch about, and I was like, I just was continuing on. I didn't really know what I was doing there or had any sort of concept of it but then every sketch teacher would say if you want to get better at sketch writing take an improv class i had no idea what improv was i saw a show years or two like a few years back when i was 21 in um vegas i went to like a show i think they had a second city out there they had something that i saw in vegas Mm -hmm. and that was the first thing of improv but i still didn't even know what it was exactly i didn't know that they were like just doing that off the cuff i thought they're just funny mm, people acting yeah funny. i know if you don't know what improv is you're like what's right. happening I've had several people come up to me and be like i heard you're a stand-up comedian now i'm like no yeah that's a, everyone says <laughs> that totally to me yeah, they're they like don't tell know. me jokes i worked this I guy the other day is like tell me some jokes he's like you say you teach comedy you <laughs> oh my god tell me any jokes. i know I'm like, i don't have you're like jokes. it's it's not how it works yeah. but yeah. And then people feel like they expect you to be funny all the time. And mm-hmm. you're like, I'm just trying to do my job here, dude. <laughs> exactly. Oh so, yeah, I mean, I took the sketch class and got an improv class and improv. The first level is pretty much all mirroring a lot of the mm-hmm. like vial swollen stuff. Yeah. Um, a lot of passing energy balls from mm-hmm. each other. I didn't know what it was. I didn't were you, know what were the you hell like, was going on. Were you like, this is cool? Or were you like, this is dumb? I like, was I didn't, I really thinking back, I was just like, did you not judge it that much? I just thought it was, I, I was like, well, I guess this is how we get better at writing. I'm like, I don't know how it's like, (laughs) it was like the karate kid thing. I say that a lot. Oh yeah. Wax on, wax off. That's cool. Sort of thing. I'm like, I guess this Mm -hmm. is going to help me get better as a writer. (laughs) And do you feel like it did? Um, once I started getting into the, I mean, second city moves, you're really slow throughout the process. I mean, you're not on stage until the third level. So, and how many me, like classes do you take up? To there's that? five levels. Okay. So there's A, B, C, D, E. They're in each letter, level, each level. Oh, wow. So A and B, well, like you're 20. not, you're not on stage till after C. So <clears throat> oh. that's 24 weeks of improv. And then wow. you're on stage for, um, like 15 minutes so I mean, what is it then if you're not on say is it mostly just like theory and education and just education and then it's like see you later sign up for the next one mm-hmm. and then see you later sign up for the next mm-hmm. one and then yeah. they really delay it i mean in the the sketch writing program was i think it was like a year and a half wow and you don't do any sort of thing until the final show mm-hmm. well and that's the thing i mean we're we're gonna talk about this mm-hmm. later i don't know how much you uh, want to yeah, stay just, on uh, just is the sort of the one yeah. that's like we need to stay Rain on track so. um just for our guests because we haven't really introduced it 
today's topic is sketch, oh, as you yeah. might have mm-hmm. already guessed, is sketch. And um, Jason started in sketch and then moved into improv, so we thought he would be a great person to talk about this. Katie took his sketch class at the Reno Improv. It was amazing. Um, I couldn't get in because I came too late. Well, it's so a big commitment, too. Yeah. I mean, you have yeah. to be, it's every Sunday for like a year, <laughs> yeah. pretty much. So yeah. Yeah. it's a big commitment. So this is really in depth stuff, and I hope we can learn some stuff. We got a bunch of questions. So yeah. From- yeah. Well, I mean, I think we can just continue the flow. I mean, it's like, I think one of the things, too, I wanted people, because um, I know when I learned about like Second City, like my impression, because I didn't know anything about it, and I was like, oh, that's where everybody from like Saturday Night Live comes <laughs> out of, like, you know. Yeah. And then I was talking to this girl, I was actually recently in, um, in a stand-up comedy competition and she's like oh yeah you know I perform you know I, I, I go to Second City and then I'm like and this was in LA because mm-hmm. there's a school there and and I was like wait is, what, can anybody do it like I was just like what's the deal <laughs> like you know and so um, so can you explain a little bit like what it's like. It, like is everybody that goes to Second City like automatically on Saturday Night Live <laughs> uh, well not not me <laughs> but um like how does that all work the way it works I mean, it's still, I still have a veil from it. Like, don't really have the insider scoop because I wasn't like an, an it's, it's a lot of politics. And, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Second City was. But how do you get, do you have to apply? Like, how do you actually, can you just sign up? Can anybody sign, like what? For how classes? Does, yeah, so or whatever. So for classes, anyone could sign up. So okay. you could sign up for the sketch writing. I mean, when I started, it was still sketch and improv. And then I was there for like six years, not at Second City specifically, mm-hmm. but throughout Chicago. I did Second City. Then I did. Um, what's it called? Um, I O the annoyance. No. Oh, the annoyance. Okay. Then I did a lot of stuff with this guy Jimmy Crane, and then I mm-hmm. did the I O at the end. Okay. And I O, and that was, yeah. So, anyways, um, anyone could sign up for Second City for the sketch or the improv. But then, so there's no like you have to get in like as a like a college application where they're like, well, no. There okay. was a. I wanted the last thing I was doing was getting into directing. I took directing at the annoyance of this guy Mick Napier who directed a lot of. Um, Second City main stage shows and he's like the head guy at the annoyance uh-huh. and um, I took directing with him and then I was going to and then the Second City had a directing program mm-hmm. and that you had to apply for I see. and Mick I, and Mick's like I could give you a recommendation so I had to mm-hmm. like fill out and what they do that if you get hired as if you get on that directing program it's like a year long and then Second City has Um, ships out there like sailing like in cruise ships and they have like a tour bus that they like go on tour with with like archived sketches and stuff so i possibly Mm could have or got a job teaching at second city so Mm -hmm. it's like i could have had something maybe happen there if i did the directing program hang on um jess has to hydrate (laughs) this happened last time it won't let me just pull it up there we go okay sorry uh, Everybody drink a sip of water. <laughs> Just a little reminder to stay hydrated. Um, so yeah, so yeah. that you had to apply to. Then the improv levels, there was five improv, A, B, C, D, E. Those are the beginners. But then if you wanted to get in the advanced improv and do the whole thing, like Second City is famous for basically what they do on the main stage is they have the actors improvise scenes and then the, the scenes that are good and worthy of turning into sketch they'll write into sketch i see so that's then what they put on for their shows so that's now, called the conservatory and you okay. have to audition to get into that okay and then if you get into that like do you get paid or is it just like oh i get the honor of not or... the conservatory okay no. but they, then there's also what they call general auditions so general auditions at second city that's where you go and then you could get cast and put on a ship or you could be put on like the touring company. One of their like monetized. Yeah, exactly. Like, then you deals. could get hired, or you could go on the ETC. The, the, there's the ETC and the main stage. So those are the two biggest stages there. Okay. But, so when you're doing this, is this like a like kind of university style program where you're you're getting loans to do it, or are you like working while you're? doing I was just it? working while I was doing it. Yeah. I mean, the classes when I was there, and this was like mid two thousands, were I think I was paying like three hundred something a piece for the sketch classes. And then depending on improv is probably the same. Um, and then annoyance was always the cheapest. They were like 200 something, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, that that's awesome. That actually sounds really low yeah. for Chicago. And every yeah. theater had different philosophies of how they do things. Um, but anyways, for SNL, though, um, I don't know how it worked with um, 
Second City, but I know that at IO, the owner, Sharna Halpern was her name. And oh, she's, yeah. so she's the owner. I read her book. We'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. Um, she, so basically what I've heard from the grapevine was um, if you're on a team at IO or if you're friendly with her and everyone knows each other there, it's again, it's a small community. Like everybody here probably knows each other. It's mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. yeah, know, everyone knows the main people. So mm-hmm. he, I guess Lauren Michaels goes down to IO <laughs> and watches people have like short aud- auditions. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. But you have to get like invited, or you have to be in. Or right. You have to be in the in the know in order to get that. Uh-huh. And I never was at that level. Uh-huh. Um, I was just mainly taking classes, and I didn't interact with anybody. Really. Yeah, <laughs> so you, you weren't like the schmoozer networker no, I, type. I possibly, yeah, maybe could have been. Yeah, I mean, but I just yeah. never. And I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I was, right. I was started writing, and then for whatever reason, improv sucked me along and got me into all this other stuff because i saw it getting it i did see it helping the sketch writing just because you learn about dialogue you see how people talk um you see what works on stage you know this Mm -hmm. is stuff that falls flat or the stuff that has energy throughout the whole scene so right and i just loved watching it like more than anything like watching being in class with my classmates would be fun to hang out and watch the scenes and then when I would have to go up, I'd be like, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, sometimes I'd do really good or I would just bomb. Yeah. So I had like, those are my two things. Right. My two modes. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's mostly everybody's mode, two modes. Um, well, and the other thing, too. So, I mean, we've kind of skipped over this, but like, I kind of feel like we need to talk about what is sketch. I mean, I know that's yeah. a huge topic. Yeah. I'm but like, 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 okay, first day in one of your mm-hmm. sketch classes, people are like, okay, what are we doing here? Yeah, that's like, a good what way to approach it. Yeah. This? You know, like, like what's the 101 fundamentals that like we have to keep in mind when we're deciding whether or not to do a sketch class? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the first thing I, I mean, how I taught it, I think the first thing you have to do is realize that everyone's voice is unique and different so i think getting the writers like i had them do a um a writer's notebook i called it it's basically Mm -hmm. um just writing down observations that you find funny Mm -hmm. just to start figuring out what you find funny and then reading those out in class and just seeing how everyone's kind of different and everyone has their like unique um, point of view on life and everything like that and i think in knowing that yours is a yours is your thing it's like you don't have to adapt to anybody else or change for whoever else it's like just becoming more confident in that and then from there it's like well it's five pages and you give them the five point structure there's a structure for sketch that i learned um get hydrate again because <laughs> i just pressed snooze so we have to just i don't know i don't have the magical fingers <laughs> but yeah it's like um it's about character. Um, a lot of sketch that I learned is about character transformation. Like, how do you get um, the character who's the sketch is mainly about? How do you get this guy to, to change right. or this woman to change throughout um, the process of this five pages? But there's it's a like a heightening of where the character starts. Yeah, and where they're going exactly. Um, so I think once you learn the structure of it, it's like it's five pages. There could be anywhere from two to six characters typically because a typical cast is about, you know, six people Mm -hmm. is what I learned. And I'm sure it's different everywhere else, but it's like that's just how I was how I was trained and what I learned. So that's what I just kind of stuck with. Yeah. And um, then you start learning that there's different types of sketches. There's like clash of context, fish out of water, moral dilemma, inappropriate Mm -hmm. response. And then you start learning those patterns and then you write to those patterns and then you start, I don't know, it's mm-hmm. kind of just, um, it's, they're kind of just short mini plays, I guess. Mm-hmm. And so. how long would like a five page sketch be? How long performed? Yeah. Typically five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It's about a minute a page. Okay. Um, and you just learn the process of like a lot of people write a lot of dialogue at first or they'll write, you don't really need, it's like bare bones. You don't need a lot of description. It's you just set the scene like a mm-hmm. restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, Is there any one, one style that you find yourself gravitating towards that you do more often or you find works for you? And writing sketch? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I guess it'd be from the patterns. Um, I think one of my, 
I don't. I just like mo- basically. Um, I don't know exactly. Um, well, like let's talk about. You don't have to pick a favorite, but mm-hmm. like let's talk about one in particular, so we can just like kind of. So, because I think too, like for me, I, I, I don't know what you your philosophy is on mm-hmm. this but for me it starts with characters like that's the yeah. like and you kind of just said that right mm-hmm. so and i remember one of the first exercises we did was like you're like just choose somebody in your life or yeah. you know and just write about them like what they eat just like what they eat like how they talk like yeah, what yeah. they look like or whatever and um you know and then drawing from that mm-hmm. like um, you know, you can you can start to build a character out of yeah. somebody and then you start to think about, OK, what what kind of dilemma would this person run into or like mm-hmm. what, you know, how would they interact with others that would be funny or whatever. But um you know, just taking something like fish out of water, mm-hmm. like, you know, what, how would you, well, what is that? Like, what kind of sketch is that? We'll just take one, one example, I guess. Oh, I, I probably can't remember all the stuff. Oh, so okay. Like, uh, well, <laughs> I'm going to put you on this. But it's basically, but generally, it's, it's basically about taking a character um, and putting them in an environment where they don't typically belong, or that's something that's going to, you know, kind of turn their world upside down. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm trying to think of... Um, well, like uh, one of our sketches, uh, by the way, that uh, we have one more weekend left. So this Saturday, December 14th, come on down to Reno Improv. Uh, our last um, sketch show, Herd, Immun- Herd Immunity, is happening at 8 o'clock p.m. But um, one of those sketches, I feel like, it, wouldn't you say Vince's sketch yeah, Vince is, is a fish, fish out, out of water? water so, so Yeah, his is basically about a, a couple, a young couple in college, a guy and a girl, and the girl is comes from a big Italian family and um, that sounds very Vince this, yes this, yeah. and the kid is kind of like a standard golf nerd prep kind of guy so <laughs> it's like taking that sort of person from that his reality which is probably you know at one time he's like I would like to play golf with you so I'm, I'm just <laughs> yeah. assuming his backstory this is a guy who maybe plays tennis plays golf <laughs> on the weekends very proper yeah. um, then gets brought into a, f- a family that's completely loud rambunctious and total chaotic like right. something he's never experienced in his entire <laughs> life I think, that, I think I've I've seen that a lot um, on SNL particularly I think mm-hmm. of Will yeah. Ferrell when I think that a fish out of Will water Ferrell. scene He's very right. much a fish out of water in a lot of his sketches. Yeah, I can't think of it. Yeah, you once you start like learning the patterns, um, you'll start seeing them in all sorts of things. I think like Splash is a classic fish out of water. That's like Tom Hanks and that the oh movie. yeah, Splash <laughs> like literally, literally a fish out of water. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Um, We're going to skip into, just for time's sake, we're going to skip into the concept of the day. Today's concept is creating a comedic character for Sketch. Well, let Katie take this away. Yeah, so we we just... um just kind of brushed up on on how you know that can be the sort of foundation of a sketch that you you write but um but we talked a lot about how um you know we did a particular segment or whatever class on creating a character Mm -hmm. right so you can get your notes out if you want (laughs) (laughs) it's totes fine um so uh you know we we le- we talked a lot about things like point of view, which mm-hmm. we talk about that in improv, too, because, I mean, part of this podcast, too, for the it, it is about sketch. But I want to talk about kind of the overlap of sketch and improv, too, because it is actually called for the love of improv. So yeah. but I do there is a lot of overlap. And mm-hmm. and um, and we, we talked a, a bit about that in the class itself, because yeah. most people or all everybody who took that class basically has were all yeah. improvisers as mm-hmm. well. So, but, but yeah, I mean, just talking, talking about, you know, uh, what sharpens a character. I mean, yes, you can do a preliminary, Mm -hmm. um, exercise of like writing about your dad or something and creating a character after that, but then it's, it's honing in on sort of the more, um, technical part of it and really fleshing out that character. So like we talk about like point of view, we talk about, um, you know how to exaggerate mm-hmm. um can you well expand? the four main qualities according to my phone and my notes are, <laughs> uh, well, eventually what phone. happens though um i think in comedy or any sort of art is 
all this stuff kind of fades away. Like this is all like kind of guideposts for right. people like mm-hmm. to help them. Mm-hmm. But it's like if you start, I don't know, some people could read stuff like this and kind mm-hmm. of learn the traits or whatever and then just kind of go off and plug in the stuff kind of like math or like kind of like an equation. But yeah, for me, like I just always just trusted whatever. And I always tell people, trust your instincts. Mm-hmm. It's like just trust whatever, whatever you think is funny. But, I think it helps to mm-hmm. for me like – Like if something's not working in a sketch or whatever it may be, it's like then to go back to this and be like, oh, wait, is it because the point of view is not clear enough Mm. or is it because I need to exaggerate or raise the stakes or like, you know, yeah, that's yeah. What's great about the difference there between improv and sketch is that you can you can say, hey, that didn't work and go back and rewrite it. Yes. Over and over and over again until it's mm-hmm. perfect. Yeah. Exactly. Whereas in improv, you kind of just have to feel it out like you were saying. <laughs> yeah. Like you just got to kind of trust your instincts. Yep. So, yeah, um, I'm sure kind of in the beginning of sketch writing, that's really important is to kind of just trust. And then as you go, you can get feedback. Yeah. yeah but your gut, right? yeah. And like in improv, too, though, like you're still thinking about things like point of view you know like I know I always mention him almost every podcast like Wazowski was very much about that like right. you know it's actually he's basically like nothing else matters except for your yeah, point of that's view that's the whole like, annoyance philosophy really um, yeah their whole philosophy was take care of yourself and the scene will yeah um, follow and right. if you make a strong choice that is enough support to help your partner mm-hmm. so if you walk on a stage and you're just kind of this guy you know, mm-hmm. that's really not giving anyone anything right but if you're this guy or, you know if you're like <laughs> yeah. if you do something like bold if you make mm-hmm. bold choices it's like you're you becoming that character and taking that and having that strong point of view will give the person enough so then you don't have to think about all the other stuff right, right. exactly yeah. um, then they have a kind of like Courtney said like they, then they have a choice they they yeah. have a reality that's set in front of them and they can either go with it or they mm-hmm. can disagree with it and right feel yeah. with. and I feel like with sketch I mean point of view serves like it helps you to gu- guide writing the sketch do you mm-hmm. know like right like if you just i feel like at some point too um i don't know if you said i don't know where i saw this or what is i feel like but it was from your class where it's mm-hmm. like oh yeah you get to a point where you're like you just let the character start writing the sketch yeah. almost i mean i don't know that's and like, even though that's kind of like that met or i don't know if that even is it's kind of a weird thing to say. Like, I know, but, it's, it, but yeah. it's like you really. I mean, that's, so that's what, not really what's happening. You are still writing. You're the still sketch. writing it, but it, but it, but it is. I mean, the way that you explain it, it's. I think it's. Um, this guy is a this fiction writer. I like a lot. George Saunders. He talks a lot about writing short stories, kind of the same way, and it's about like. Um, it's kind of about, and the same thing with improv, like a lot of these ideas blend within each other. Um, it's about listening. So it's like you listen to the characters or you listen to the story. And what that means is you're not like letting them just write for you, but you're you're really listening to like, why did, you know, what is this person doing? What do they want? What are they thinking without trying to get in its way? You're, mm-hmm. It's like you're really trying to just listen as closely as possible to whatever's on the page and it's like it's hard to explain that concept i feel like but yeah no um, i like that because i mean i mean we talk a lot about listening and improv mm -hmm. and i think that there's again like that's an overlap as well like obviously like you're more literally listening on Mm -hmm. stage to what the person is doing i mean not just saying but doing and their mannerisms and what how they're reacting to you and all that stuff so that you know you you can maybe helped to move the scene along and everything like that and then i mean it's really we're saying saying like pay attention to all the details yeah, and i think it's saying that in every <clears throat> art form it's like mm-hmm. pay attention yeah. to as much attention as you can and and take the pressure off of yourself and mm-hmm. i don't it's it's some like zen practice it's yeah. like improv yeah. writing um like you guys were talking about yoga and <laughs> like um uh meditation yeah or all the, like um that sounds a like lot me. of <laughs> yeah. a lot of like zen buddhism stuff it's like all of it is like in the more older i get the more i'm seeing these correlations from it all mm-hmm. and totally the, the more you could get to that point with all of it i think the better you could... yeah and like just i think that idea of like getting i mean we talked like in Rosalski again we talked a lot about like getting out of the way of yourself yeah. and like mm-hmm. the difference between the actor and the 
person or I forget he uses a different term but you know it's like instead he's like I mean the way he puts it is like don't bring your bullshit yeah like he's very like really yeah Yeah. and it's just like don't don't bring your shit you're an actor like you're a character Mm -hmm. like let let yourself be that character and don't let your bs like don't get don't get actually annoyed by somebody you know like don't bring that onto the stage i think it all kind of boils down to exactly what you're saying with the zen is getting Mm -hmm. to that place where you're really listening because Mm -hmm. you cannot be truly listening Mm -hmm. and not present you can't be in your head and also truly listening Mm -hmm. like you if you're if you're listening you're in the moment and you're paying attention and you're taking it in processing it Mm -hmm. um if you're in your head or somewhere else that like you're you're not actually listening right Um, yeah and you kind of need to check on yourself and i think it's so hard to do because (sighs) your life in your life it's like you never live in the moment no it's like you're thinking about the past you're thinking about the future you're thinking about this or that or what i have to do aaron so then it's like that's why it's improv or it's like you get the opportunity that's why i think it's so like maybe that i stuck around with it because it is kind of therapeutic i know that another i think courtney was talking about that. we always come like we, i feel like we that. always circle back to that mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. but it's i also think it's not therapeutic but it's also like oh it's putting you in your natural state of moment to moment pre- like being it's like mm-hmm. alan watts is like another guy i listen to a lot like he talks a lot about that it's like mm-hmm. just being like but i think it's like to get your brain to even be in the moment it's yeah like, you don't even know how to be in the moment no. as a human anymore because well, we're so messed up yeah, with society exactly Ex- i was just gonna say it's all society's fault yeah. like <laughs> fucking society man it's your fault society yes yeah. yeah. <laughs> damn you society but i mean it's true because it's like we're especially now with technology and all mm. that stuff oh, like yeah, we're okay. always like on our i mean that's like we're always somewhere else like physically now we're physically yeah. somewhere else mm. you know because we're on our phones or like we're thinking about tomorrow um but yeah and and it's i don't know i think that's what's so awesome awesome about improv Mm -hmm. or I don't know comic improv feels like it really gets to that pure place sometimes though yeah is that you when you have a moment where you're actually I don't know about Mm -hmm. you guys but when you're actually in the moment Mm -hmm. yeah it is the most wonderful feeling and you get off your stage off stage and you're like Oh my God, I got a break from my brain, first of all. Mm -hmm. And second of all, I just feel so relaxed. Yeah, it's crazy. Which is weird because, you know, usually when you're on stage, you're like, I got to perform, you know? And it's just like, I don't know, it's great. Let's talk about like that in particular, because I know we feel that a lot when we're doing improv, but do you, you know, from someone who's done sketch, like, do you feel that in sketch? Well, I think, yeah, I was just going to say, I think with sketch, maybe what it is, is you're capturing, you're capturing that on paper, maybe maybe yeah, yeah. It's like the same thing with writing a story mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. you're trying to you're trying to reach out into the far cosmos you know like as hippy dippy as it sounds but <laughs> you know yeah it's like you're trying to reach out and then solely pull this like you know this sacred knowledge or create this piece of art and um, get it on paper as as best as you possibly can and when you have it and you do it right, those sketches, you know, like they just flow. Uh, like yeah, like they flow. They have power. Mm-hmm. They're kind of like yeah. moving on the page. It's like right. there's an energy to them. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. it's like trying to pull that out and capture that. So mm-hmm. I think maybe that's what you're trying to do with sketch and writing in predict in particular. Just trying to shut up. I mean, your own mind trying mm-hmm. to stop you as clever as you think you are and just try to listen. Like some yeah. writers say, like they feel like they get dictation and i'm and i don't i never got to that state but i'm like maybe that's a state that they've just been able to tap into from writing for however long or mm-hmm. what, what do they mean by dictation where it's like they're literally just at the keyboard and they're hearing the, just, the words come to them and they're, it's they're just typing it out and they're just kind of it's like the character is speaking to them yeah, or something or it's like they it have just, it's like if somebody was just talking to you in your head and you're just typing that out it's like the well. idea that the character is writing the sketch for mm-hmm. you because you're putting yourself in the character shoes instead of your own it's like the thing with improv where it's like yeah. you're putting yourself aside and just imagining and it does sound like you talk about it it sounds like hippy dippy and like oh yeah it's totally cool (laughs) and like whatever and like you know I don't know it's hard to explain but it's I don't mean to sound like I gotta take the sketch class I know but really quick though to get back in the if you do want to look like I think like Katie was saying if you want to 
Like, I think it's good to try it. And then if you're like, oh, I can't really, this character is not working or I'm having trouble figuring out who this person is to go back and figure out who they are. You could, mm -hmm. from these notes that I have, you could do um, <laughs> comic perspective is mm -hmm. um, one thing. Yeah. It's like, does your character, like, ask questions. Like, you write a character, it's like, oh, they're not working. They don't seem funny enough. The one thing you say is, like, does this character have a strong comic perspective? Mm -hmm. And that's basically their, like, unique, quirky way of, like, viewing the world. Like, how do they view it that's different than... Uh, typical person who's not funny mm -hmm. um, and you could think of that as like are they playful do they have a cynicism, cynicism to them are they arrogant and the stronger you can make that and um, exaggerate that the funnier the character will be yeah like go ahead that actually makes me think of SNL where they often do like the the um, like game show and they have like all these different yeah. characters uh -huh. and they'll ask one question and then you'll go down the line and see how these different characters from their perspective think of it differently. Yeah, totally. That that's a great example. Like yeah. I'm yes. Sean, totally. Sean <laughs> that and that's Norma that God. format. That's that sketch. That Jeopardy yeah. format has been around forever on mm -hmm. SNL, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that reminded me too, like when when we did that first exercise of like writing. Mm -hmm. about a character of course I did choose my dad it's true <laughs> and one of my dad's one of the comic perspectives that I kind of pulled from him was that like he loves to tell we were talking about this if no I was talking about never mind um but he loves to you know tell you the history of everything so All I think right. I had him like eating nice. pea soup or something <laughs> and then he was like and then I'll be like oh what are you eating dad and he's like I'm eating pea soup and did you know do you want to know the history of pea soup <laughs> you know and it's yeah, like yeah. so that's like just an example too of like mm -hmm. what a comic perspective so that's something that does come from an actual Actual real person but then yeah. how can you heighten that like of course he doesn't actually tell me the history of peace soup although yeah, yeah. i'm sure he probably anyways yeah. <laughs> yeah but that's that's yeah that's one and then you have exaggeration obviously mm -hmm. um that takes comic perspective and pushes and stretches it and accelerates it until it's um you know funny and you want to be bold with the exaggeration um and all that sort of stuff uh Sorry. I feel like too that that like um, <laughs> like be you want to be like if you it's like all right my character like for that it's like uh, I had here a neurotic so it's like mm -hmm. if he's neurotic he's like oh you know like kind of like a Woody Allen like if you watch it like Annie Hall or whatever mm -hmm. else he's a pretty big neurotic like yeah so you want to make it the biggest neurotic mm -hmm. you could be like really make them you know s far out there yeah well and I think that too like just as like a beginner either in impro improv or sketch or comedy just in general like you know that exaggeration I just feel like sometimes it's like oh yeah I'm exaggerating and then it's like but can you take it farther like I always remember yeah. feeling like mm -hmm. oh I'm exaggerating it but it's like but you're not going as far as you could yeah. <laughs> you know like so I feel like I stretch that muscle in your class for sure like yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, let's jump into a game. All right. Uh, yeah. What's the game today? today so is... okay, so um, it's called bullshit, <laughs> <laughs> um, and it really is a game. And we did this, I think, with Aurora's um, episode on episode five. I mean, it's similar, but you know, we talk a lot about heightening um, in both improv and um, sketch, mm -hmm. and um, you know, and with sketch too. I feel like um, we talk about it in a way of like raising the stakes we talk yeah. a lot about raising the stakes mm -hmm. and kind of really squeezing that character because that's that's where it's going to make it even funnier you know i mean what, what would you yeah. how would you define raising the stakes do you, you want to like what do they have to lose or gain is basically okay. what stakes yeah. are and it's like for instance um i thought of it's like if a couple is out to eat mm -hmm. it's like they're just out to eat right it's like Nothing so really there. <laughs> yeah, uh, a couple who is not married is out to, or who got divorced recently is out to eat. That's a little more interesting, right? A couple who's um, out to eat, who's divorced, and they were divorced because their child was killed in a car accident. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty high stakes, yeah. like meeting, and it's like just ra just it's like how can I push it even more mm -hmm. to make the drama higher, to make it more intense, to make right. it more. Um, explosive and mm -hmm. funny when it does when the you know yeah. the comedy does come right so it's just like how can i you know yeah make those situations up yeah and that's to mm -hmm. me that's like a form of heightening as yeah. well right mm -hmm. like in writing form um so anyways it's just a simple game it's kind of like the game we played with aurora which is like good bad ugly advice but this is just it, it's called bullshit because um 
and I've never played this, so we'll see how it goes. But basically, you start with like just a regular, like a simple statement, and then um, the next person kind of takes it to another exaggerated level, and then um, the next, and then you kind of like just keep trying to heighten it until it sounds so ridiculous, and then somebody can be like, "That's bullshit!" Like nobody <laughs> would believe that. So you right. just kind of keep going around the circle until you call bullshit. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> It might be. Whatever. Okay, here we go. Shall I start? Or does somebody else want to start? So you just say a simple statement? So you still, yeah, you say a simple, simple sta- statement. Um, Do you have one? Um, the, the clown laughed. <laughs> um, the clown laughed at the child. The clown laughed at the crying child. The clown laughed at the crying sick child. <laughs> <laughs> the, cl- <laughs> the clown laughed at the crying sick son. <laughs> His crying sick son. The clown laughed at his crying sick son as... He sneezed in his the clown's face. <laughs> <laughs> the clown laughed. The know. clown laughed at his crying sick son when he s- sneezed in his face, and um, <laughs> it's getting hard. I don't know. It's it's hard to remember it. Um, I know. <laughs> the, I don't. <laughs> you the could clown add to it. All right. The clown. The clown laughed at his crying sick son who sneezed in his face. And then rob the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. All right, yeah. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> I don't even know if that, I played that correctly. But I, mean, yeah. I mean, it is kind of like each time you're adding a little more information. Yeah. So like the the clown I, laughed is mm-hmm. like a general statement. No, it's just not really interesting. Yeah. Oh, you're la- laughing at a sick kid. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, this is like... Kind yeah, of a dick clown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and and it keeps going. Oh, like mm-hmm. he? Why is he laughing when he just got sneezed at in the face by a sick kid? Right. Like, what's going? It, it makes you ask more questions about. Well, what is going on in the scene that we don't know about? That this clown. Like, what's wrong with the clown? What's the clown? Right. It, yeah. It begs some questions. It's a good way. Yeah, I could see that being a good way of height. Just like. How far can you hide in it before, like Jess was saying, until it sounds ridiculous. Yeah, ridiculous. And maybe a good way, like if you have a character that you're trying to figure out mm-hmm. how to put in a like a more uh, higher stake situation. So let's try one more. Let me get, let me, do, I'll, okay. I'll take okay. a better one. Um, okay. I'll just be like, uh, Mary was nice. Let's try like okay. a real character okay. instead of a clown. All right. Um, Mary... Um, Hang on. Mary gave all her money to her best friend because she was so nice. <laughs> I don't know. Mary gave all her money to her best friends because she was so nice, but she didn't have any money left and lived on the street. <laughs> Mary gave all her money to her best friend because she was so nice. And she lived on the street and started selling um, her blood. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Mary, I'm not calling bullshit on that. Yeah, yet. yeah. Because <laughs> she was really nice. So Mary was really nice. She gave all her money to her best friend and she lived on the streets and gave, sold her blood. Um, and then. Um, she uh, shaved her head and gave her hair to <laughs> cancer patients. <laughs> Bullshit. She's not that nice. <laughs> Nobody's that nice. Yeah, right. Nobody's that nice. No. Um, <laughs> but I see how that could come up. Yeah, I mean, at least from creating a story or creating mm-hmm. some, even it helps 
create something for Mary. Like, mm-hmm. well, and then and then like you mm-hmm. start to have feelings for Mary. Well, like why is Mary so nice that she's giving away? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like everything? yeah. Like, is there something mentally wrong with Mary? Yeah, yeah. That she's well, so nice? and that's that actually like one of the things that we talked about in class about character and about this concept of the day, which is creating mm-hmm. a comedic character, was also about like what are their wants and desires. So yeah. it's like it's like okay, Mary's so nice, and then you're like, why is she so nice? Yeah, what's behind great. that? Why does she want to be nice? Why mm-hmm. is that? necessary for that character mm-hmm. yeah what you know what in her past do we not know about that mm-hmm. exactly. exactly and then she kind of becomes mm-hmm. more fleshed out that way i guess and then you know yeah. that's that's the whole idea too i think is like you you get this character from like okay you can start with one line mary's M- mary was nice and that's also a flaw too like that's another yeah. thing, character flaws it's, right it's a flaw that's a positive flaw because there's positive and negative flaws like mm-hmm. a negative you know negative flaw if she was maybe not mean, nice but, if she, but she's so her flaw is that she's so nice that it's right. detrimental she, it's it's causing her to you know live right. this life of de- no no house on the streets and she's given blood and right. her head and i feel like it. at the very end there's like some kind of ulterior motive that we don't know about mm. like she's uh-huh. trying to get into heaven but in the end she doesn't get into heaven because god thinks she's so annoying because she's too nice yeah. well yeah i mean and that could be so then there's there's the beginning of a sketch right mm-hmm. okay so now we're now it takes place at the gates of heaven oh, right nice, I mean yeah. you know and now now one of the characters is God or whatever mm-hmm. and you know and Mary can have but God I was so nice and then God can be kind of an asshole mm-hmm. and <laughs> be like well you were too nice, you were too nice yeah. so you can't come in I mean that's hilarious right there right yeah. because it's like well the expectation is that you know if you're good and you're nice yeah. you get into heaven well that apparently get, not and to like a point of view of the sketch like not all it's like not and we say like a point of view of the sketch like what is the sketch overall point of view it could be like not all nice mm-hmm. people get into heaven or if you try too hard in life you may not get what you want maybe right. something mm-hmm. like that you could have some like deeper want, meaning like... yeah yeah and that's mm-hmm. that's we, we didn't really talk I mean we talked about the point of view of the character yeah. but we talk a lot about the point of view and, and actually mm-hmm. really it is necessary to have a, your sketch has to have a point of view and and yeah. we do um, we do talk about like um, we do talk about political sketches Mm -hmm. and I mean that those kind of lend themselves a little more to that. But even if they're not political, it's like, what is, what are you trying to say? You know, Mm -hmm. what are you trying to say in this whole sketch? Like, what is the message? You know, and every page should, should, (laughs) um, should, yeah, yeah. shouldn't be informed by that point of view. So like at second city, they'd say like, write the point of view, point of view on the top of each page of your sketch and make sure that each page is serving that point of view. Mm -hmm. So all the dialogue, all the characters, it's all kind of going into that sort of thing, which will then make it stronger. And, um, it just, will just make it, you know, have a thing of its own. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. And, I, and in improv, I I do kind of find myself sometimes abandoning my point of view because somebody mm-hmm. like came out with some, me with something that surprised me, and I'm like, yeah. oh, like now mm-hmm. I kind of have to fit that. But like, if you're like, no, I'm st- no matter what, I'm sticking to my point of view. Yeah, that could be where the hilarity actually comes in. Yeah, mm-hmm. so totally. It's like it's like most people would kind of not stick to their point of view after hearing that, but then, you know, she mm-hmm. does and that kind of heightens it and exaggerates. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing too, like um what I, you know, because Um, You know, Jason touched on the fact that, you know, he kind of starts the class off with, um, you know, people kind of owning, right, their own experience as as where of of a source of comedy. Right. Mm. And then part of that, too, is that because, you know, the bulk of the class is us writing sketches and then the whole class is reading the sketches and then commenting on them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And so being able to hear that feedback and also being able to give it in a good way. Yeah. um, but um, where was I going with that? I don't know. Do to- <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to bring that up because because I think yeah. that that is so. Oh, because I know why. Because um, it's so important to the writing process. I feel like it was so, uh, you know, I learned so much from doing that. Mm. And um, I think the the one of the questions that we would constantly come back to is, well, what is the point of view? If yeah. there was something not working in the sketch, it, we would come back to that question and say, well, maybe because you're not, you've gotten away from the point of view or it's not clear mm-hmm. anymore. Or like, so it was just all in those discussions with, with other people in the class that I found so valuable. And I never really have been in a class like that where it's like, like a workshop. 
workshop style. Yeah, like a workshop style mm-hmm. class, and and um, you know, you really have to set that up carefully because yeah. it's writing is so personal, and you don't want to. You don't. It can't be a thing where people feel criticized. Right. The trick is, like, uh, or my trick. Yeah, what's the trick? Jason? The trick is, uh, you just start the class by, like, say it's the first day of workshop after you guys wrote your first sketch. Mm-hmm. Um, after th- they read it, um, ask what if what did you observe? That's yes, and it's like observe. just just tell me just tell me what you observed. How many characters are in the sketch? Mm-hmm. Um, where's the sketch set? Right. Um, it neutralizes. Yeah, it. And, yeah. And, and and it's also it neutralizes it. It also just gets people pointing out what they're observing as well as gets people talking about it. Mm-hmm. And once you got and once they start talking. They just kind of go, yeah. Um, because it's like if you ask a, like a hard question, it's like, all right, what's the point of view of that? It's it's a very yeah loaded thing yes. just to ask. For, right. and it's it's um intimidating to the students as well as um just uh it it could be someone could say you know it could just lead into an argument over what it actually is rather yeah, than well, just saying what's there on the page yeah and the other technique you use is that you know while we're talking so say if it's my sketch mm-hmm. that we're talking about we've just read so i as the author am kind of silenced mm-hmm. yeah while everybody else talks about it and so mm-hmm. if they have a question like what is the point of view instead of uh, directing it to me mm-hmm. which feels more kind of attacking and aggressive it's yeah. like oh it's more of like i wonder I'm kind of wondering what the point of view is here. I'm not sure if it's clear. And so then it just becomes kind of like somehow it it just diffuses it. It yeah. doesn't, it feels like, oh, they're just, that's brought up a question. It's mm-hmm. just this third person thing. And then after the discussion, then as the author, you can kind of be like, oh yeah, well, this is where I was thinking, but yeah, okay. I can see where that's unclear or whatever, you know? Yeah. Asking questions like that is huge. I mean, we did that. Yeah. Um, I had a teacher, Kim Barnes in Idaho when I was going to grad school and everything she's like if you don't don't like you know if if you have a question just or if you have uh like a negative thing like so say a character's acting um unbelievable and it's like i don't believe instead of saying like i don't believe this character just frame it be like why why do you have your character doing this they seem like it seems kind of odd like just That's framing just, yeah. framing it in a question just right. a, another way to alleviate yes mm-hmm. the, like the pain of take getting the note as the writer as well as um making it seem kind of you know right i might take that a step farther and sometimes like when people are asking you why why did you do this mm-hmm. like that can even sound a little like i would almost say like Hey, like you said in the beginning, mm-hmm. like, hey, can you explain what you were thinking when this happened? Yeah, and that's then, like, good. And then can mm-hmm. we break it apart? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, that kind of helps them kind of see mm-hmm. where it's not working. You're yeah. discussing how it's coming together in the pieces rather than the value of the whole. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Definitely. Yep. Um, anyway, let's, we got, we're running out of time. We got about 10 plus minutes left. Um, so let's do a little history. Okay. Let's um, do it. This was my homework today, um, and I thought we would just do kind of like a brief history of, um, about sketch, and I kind of want to talk, you know, um, about kind of how stuff came to life and how it kind of became really popular starting in in the 2000s. It kind of like blossomed, but it kind of got its start, you know, back in the 60s when there were several kind of sketch shows, the late night shows mm-hmm. became really popular, um, and then in the 90s... It almost became there. There started to be kind of more of these, like groups that would form, like doing like rap stuff, and and you would see these like '90s groups, and that was yeah. really popular. So what you saw in the '90s was, um, well, SNL kind of started more in the '70s, but mm-hmm. um, in the '90s you saw stuff like In Living Color come out, and. Um, kids in the hall and mm-hmm. stuff like that and so it kind of got popularized there and then of course snl kind of always wins <laughs> yeah it's like you have all these kind of yeah, snl is kind of the constant mm-hmm. and then you have all these ones coming in kind of fading out you had the, oh, like um, in the color, state remember? Yeah. yeah i remember in that was color. 80s but was it 80s? Mad, oh mad uh mad tv, mad TV. Mad TV there was one called the yet? state oh i don't remember um, that one the state yeah that came up yeah um, um and then they were kind of saying you know like in the two thousand show Oh, Miss you, show. yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, in the 2000s, when the internet hit, all mm-hmm. of a sudden, 
these five minute videos became popular and people would just like binge watch YouTube. Do you remember that when YouTube first came out oh, and just yeah. like going over to your friend's house and just like binge watching these five minute things? Well, essentially what that is, is sketch it like all those funny mm-hmm videos or sketches so they're basically lots of smaller groups started forming around sketch in different cities to make these YouTube videos and that's where you start seeing people teaming up like Key and Peele doing their own show or the Portlandia kind Mm -hmm. of well Portlandia kind of started from SNL but but those kind of people started teaming up and doing internet videos and then those internet videos would turn into shows or Comedy Central would come in and pick up yeah. stuff That's from how, um, what's it called, uh, Broad City started, I think. Oh, right? really? I think Were they, they like started, a web series or I think or so. I YouTube thought it was stars. a YouTube web okay. series that's, Love that, show. that started. It's hilarious. Yeah, Did um, you ever do any YouTube dabbling? Yeah, I have a few videos out there from <laughs> Chicago. Um, <laughs> I gotta look you up. There's a, I look up Jason Sorna's YouTube find it. channel. We I used to do like short um, movies. Like I did okay. one about a suit that was eating my body, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was like obsessed with it, and I was like eating my body away. I have to see this. I did one about a kid who was my friend Kevin and Christina. Um, Christina had a kid, and Kevin was like deathly afraid of it. To where, and we did a, like a horror movie style, whereas like the kid was like this thing that he <laughs> was like the worst thing to see for oh a single God. guy to meet oh his girlfriend's God. kid. Um, then I did one of like a house of cards where this loser guy has like all these cards show up. And his greeting cards show up to his house and he becomes friends with them and then he has to get a roommate and then I'm like destroying the cards. I don't know. Oh my God. So like weird, weird stuff like that. Oh wow. Oh my Does God. Does that stuff still exist? Yeah, it's on YouTube, yeah. I'm totally going to link it in the show notes. I'll, I'll send you guys some links if okay, you guys cool. want some of them. Okay, yeah, I'm totally looking at uh, Um, I don't know how... So yeah, how did you this have... is, but I had a yeah. little quote here. Okay. It's uh, it's from um, Paste Magazine. They did a um, an article on the strange persistence of uh, sketch comedy, and they uh, said there for some reason comedy seems to evolve faster than any other genre. Um, he said, I think it's similar to fashion. People see something and then they emulate it. Then someone else sees that and em- emulates that. The web has amped up this feedback loop considerably now that so many futures Stearns and Pasternak have entire catalogs of classic sketch, Monty P- Python, Kids in the Hall, Mr. Show at their fingertips. So it's kind of, I think they're kind of, what they're saying here is, is kind of sketch almost became the snowball effect, mm-hmm. you know, of people yeah. like, oh my God, like there's something to this and it's fun. And, and, yeah. and then more and more people as the internet goes, it just like starts blowing up to where like kind of sketch is really what people want to do because it's interactive and totally yeah and um my teacher so when i um like my first class i was had this teacher nancy beckett and i just be i was like i'm gonna be friends with that person like i just said that just because i was like she's cool she's interesting she's weird um and i was like interested in those sort of people so i was just like kind of force myself to become friends with her um and i'm still friends with her now i'm going back to chicago next week i'll go see her and hang out with her but i was writing um she was helping me write the curriculum from like that i did it over here because i was like asking her questions about some of the sketches and i would just have these phone conversations with her and take a bunch of notes and then put it into the thing call her back again go over this and then blah 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 but anyways yeah like um you're saying Jess, it's like um and she said yeah there's something to writing sketch and learning the form she's like even like a lot of the big writers they've all kind of started in like that and i think starting in sketch learning about character learning how to you know just to do a story in like five pages Mm -hmm. allows you to then even go to write books or like Tina Fey, like writing movies or writing TV shows. So it's Mm -hmm. like, it's a good form to start Mm -hmm. if you're interested in writing and um, to be creative with and collaborate with and kind of learn a lot of the basics of storytelling to go on. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think this is a good uh, spot because we really (laughs) kind of have mentioned indirectly the class, but um, 
you know, it's the, the amazing thing about this class is that, you know, it's a year long commitment. So it went in four sessions, basically. Right. Mm. And the first two sessions, you're learning about all the different types of sketch and you're writing them and you're critiquing them and whatever. And then um, as we uh, entered into the third stage, we had to choose a s- sketch and then rewrite it and rewrite it again and rewrite it again yeah. times a million, <laughs> um, which we don't have time to talk about the rewriting. But that is a huge that's also I would think also a great introduction to other writing forms because you know if you're writing a short story or a novel or whatever it is you really want to hone in and really be you know getting it down to as good as possible at the end right yeah i always tell the story of i was at io taking a tv writing class from this guy named michael mccarthy and um somebody raised their hand and for a question he's like yeah and um she's like i don't like to She's like, what if you're one of those writers who just likes to write the first draft and that's it? He's like, what advice do you have? And he's like, uh, quit. (laughs) That's not part of the thing. So like, that's, that's what I always say with like rewriting. It's like, and it's old. Everyone said it right. Writing is rewriting. It's like the first draft is just like, let's get it out as quickly as possible. Then it's like, see what you have on the page and then start using your craft of, you know, the five point structure or what, you know, going back to like your character work is, are the characters comedic enough and like going at it that way and just really fine tuning anything, everything towards the end. And then, so then from there we got to, uh, once you, we rewrote and had our sketch, we, um, we were ready to put on a show. Well, not ready, but we were. We cast the show. We had auditions, and then we each got to direct our own sketch. Mm-hmm. So, it was really cool because it's not just a writing class. You get to experience the entire thing, and we put on a sketch show, which is called Herd Immunity, by the way. Um, and then we went into rehearsals. We got to direct. We got you know, um, well, co-direct because really Jason is the director, and you know, we got each got to do our own our own help direct our own mm-hmm. sketch, and um, and then you see the show happen. And yeah. it's such a gratifying experience because it's like, here's this labor of love that you've tweaked and tweaked and you've done all this work on and, and you get to see, you know, the final product. It's, it's, it's like an amazing experience. So I highly recommend we, there, there is going to be another sketch class. I don't know if the details have been worked out yet. It but. starts, yeah, it starts in January. Okay. So I want to do it where there's a year long program and then I want to start offering levels one and level two independently as well. So if there's people out there who want to, just kind of learn the basics of it. Mm-hmm. They could take the first and second class and they'll learn all the sketch patterns. They'll ha- And then they could go, they can make their own sketches on, mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of people do it on YouTube, kind of like we were talking oh, yeah. about now. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like, I want to start offering those two independently cool. as well as have the program. So Because the program is more of just like, you not only learn the sketch, but you also, like Katie was saying, you learn rewriting mm-hmm. and then you also learn the production side. Because it's yeah. like you and everybody else should be able to go put up your own show Right. If you really wanted to, like all you yeah. guys have more than enough sketches to get together and be like, hey, you guys want to. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, that's something that you could even possibly pitch to Ben because mm-hmm. I know Ben wants to do more sketch. Yeah, we well, we've only had uh, three sold out shows yeah. <laughs> at Reno Improv. And by the way, this is all happening at Reno Improv, the show, the mm-hmm. class. Um, Jason also um, teaches level two improv. Yeah, two and three. I've taught two and three? only one level three, but mostly two. Yeah, okay. mostly two just two person scenes yep and that's at reno improv too mm-hmm. and then he also coaches uh, sensitive people which is a team that performs at reno improv regularly yep. as well awesome um on that note i think we're gonna start wrapping it up so cool. final question of the day did you come up with one no oh, okay. <laughs> well, well i had a serious so make up make does it on. have to be a silly one because i had a serious one that we didn't get to oh, okay. but well, i don't know yeah, if we have sure. time sure whatever. well i was just gonna ask this is something i asked um uh, for those dreamers out there that want to make it big in Hollywood, like how, like, can you just send your sketch to Hollywood? Like, can you just oh, like say, <laughs> yeah, like, can you just be like, address it to like SNL? You um, know? I think, although that's in, not in Hollywood, that's in New York, but yeah. <laughs> A lot of people now, I know, I know that YouTube's a big platform. Oh, okay. I, I know a lot of people, you know, like I said, like Broad City, I think, um, there's that other show on HBO, um, God, what's it called? It's about crashing. the guy who's selling the weed, not crashing. Um, <laughs> oh, high, high, high maintenance, maybe? High maintenance, yeah. high maintenance. I think that started as a YouTube yeah, thing. Yeah, I think you're um, right. Kyle. Yeah. Really, that's such a good It's so show. funny. I know, Ky- it's so quirky. Kyle HBO. Mooney and Beck Bennett. 
from SNL started with Good Neighbor on YouTube. Okay. I don't know if you guys ever seen that. Uh-uh. Um, it's a super funny little sketch thing that they would do when they were younger and living in California, and that got them out on SNL. Mm-hmm. So it's like there's really no one way to do it. Um, as far and then, yeah, I don't know exactly. I mean, I think it's literally just doing it. Like, mm-hmm. like I think the hardest part for most people is just getting off your butt and going and organizing something and getting yeah. people together and say, hey, we're doing this now. You either come or you don't, but I'm doing it either Yeah, way. and I think the totally. most important thing is doing what you think is cool and fun what? and uh, yeah. trying to get it out there so people could see it. What sketch shows that are out there right now? Because I know you've, I mm-hmm. actually want to know this myself because you've told me a million times mm-hmm. and I'm like, what did he say again? <laughs> what sketch shows like are on Netflix right now that you watch? Uh, I just watched that Tim Robinson one. He was around when I was, um, God, I can't, I can't, what the, I can't think of its name. Um, off the I link, started off watching the, the characters, which was kind of weird. I haven't watched that. Um, we'll find it and put it in the show notes. Yeah. The Tim Robinson one, he was from Second City and he was around performing oh. when I was, um, out there. So I've seen a bunch of times. I thought that was really funny and weird and irreverent. Um, okay. But I haven't really, I don't really watch a lot. What about the Rob and, no, is it Rob? You know the guy from like Breaking Bad, uh, the Better Call Saul guy? Oh, mm. yeah. And he does a sketch show with some other dude. Um, okay. well, what's his name? Um, why yeah, can't I think of it? That guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's from Mr. Show. Him and, um, yeah, okay. fuck, why can't I think of their names? I know like I'm mm. a big he's fan of both of them. It's Friday the yeah. 13th. <laughs> Yeah, he's with um, Bob Odenkirk and um, Dave. Um, yeah, right? Bob and Dave, or is it Dave? Oh, crap. Yeah, Bob and... <laughs> <That's> terrible. <laughs> well, I should know Anyways, his name. Yeah, it's like, that just that completely... Guy. Have you watched that one? Uh, David Cross, there it is. Okay. Um, uh, I haven't wa- I Did I watch the new one? I've seen all the old ones. Oh, you have? Okay. Yeah, I rented them on Blockbuster Whoa. DVD years ago. Blockbuster? Yeah, I used to have Blockbuster DVD. Um, it was back in the day. All right, so if people um, want to find Jason Sarna, if they want to be a part of what you do, you want doing... people to sign find Jason Sarna. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, that I don't really do. I deleted my Facebook a few years yeah, ago. That's why I asked because um, I knew it was kind of like yeah, I don't really. I'm not really active on social media. Mm-hmm. I've kind of got away from it. Um, I don't really have... So Reno Improv, they can find you there. Yeah, sometimes. they can find me there and uh, <laughs> Level 2 or at Sketch. Yeah, and, find uh, him on For the Love of Improv. Yeah, yeah right or here. here. Yeah. That's right. Um, or I will also link your class, um, your upcoming cool. class in the show. And Level 1 will be taught by Lisa Sheritz this time. She was a student and she, <laughs> she wrote for Mystery Science Theater 3000. Yeah. Um, she taught at the Iowa Writers Workshop, I believe. She was a, at great. Stanford. She was Stegner Fellow. So a big fiction writer as well. Like, I have a master's degree in fiction writing. And so. she's also on your sensitive people team. Yeah. yeah. So she'll be teaching level one and then I'll be teaching the rest of them. Cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm typically around there most most of the time. So. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Yeah. Um, thanks thank for you being for coming on our show. Um, yeah. Thanks for having us. And I'd like to say, like, you guys are doing a great job. I listened yes. to all the episodes and Yay. I was we have a fan. very <laughs> impressed. And, uh, like, seriously, I'm not just saying that. You yeah. guys really thank stick to. You. You keep it interesting. You keep it moving. You oh, let good. the guests talk. You guys <laughs> have interesting things to say. I mean, way more interesting things than I could have said at improv like even after three years of doing it i'm like oh, i don't know what this is well, i was such a stupid person I was, they, you know, well <laughs> we're all <laughs> hardest on ourselves and no but thank you for saying that because we this is this is the first time we've done mm. a podcast and we're very self-conscious about what, well, you know if we're doing a good job or not so yeah. thank you I mean, we yeah, appreciate go back that. and listen to the other episodes and tell us what you think and, yeah. and every episode seems to get better and better and, and we're then excited spread about the word. Going. um you can also go to our website at for the love of improv um to give us suggestions of what you want for future podcasts and to uh, write comments yeah. of questions to ask the upcoming guests. Who are you guys going to have next? If oh, I crap. <laughs> You're putting us on the spot. Uh, yeah. well, we had Steven in the queue. Yeah. Um, Steven, who is a fellow player. I mean, right. he's, he would be coming from sort of from our perspective of like more of a beginner guy, but he's nice. a great improviser. And Well, and then also like uh, this is the first <clears throat> season and uh, we're going to end this at, at episode 10. We're going to start season two and we're talking about kind of branching out in season two and going nice. toward... Um, 
you know, doing some more workshops, maybe some remote podcasts. So cool. we're really excited. Well, about you guys the got the um, official podcast in Reno. I know. So, so far, so yeah. we know of. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone will be coming to you soon. That's probably. right. That's right. <laughs> coming soon. Stay right. tuned. And cool. thank you for listening. Yep. To for the love of improv. Yeah. Peace out.